Hey, welcome back to the channel. Every single day, people ask me questions about what they can do for their hip flexor complaints. And everyone seems to have the same story. I've tried all the things, the foam rolling, the stretching, the strengthening, and I'm still having issues. Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you a vision exercise that literally could be the icing on the cake for you as far as your hip flexor complaints go. That's right. We're gonna work your eyeballs to help your hips. Trust me, it's a thing. Uh, make sure you watch the video all the way to the end because if this exercise does help you, I know you're gonna have the question, how did it do that? So at the end of this video, I'll go over some of the neuroanatomy behind the drill. Here we go. All right, the first step is to get some kind of baseline assessment so that you know whether or not this exercise is actually helping you. And it can be super simple. You can just lift your leg, okay, let's say like your right hip is bothering you or you have a mobility restriction on that right side, you can just do some hip flexion, take a qualitative assessment to see how does it feel? How easy or difficult is it to make that motion? And are you running into any kind of limitation or discomfort when you lift your leg? That would be a really simple assessment that you could use. Now it doesn't have to be hip flexion. If you're working on something else, some other kind of movement that's important to you, like maybe squat depth. Right? Or maybe you find that you only happen to feel your hip issue when you're squatting and it has some positional specificity to it. Understand that you can use literally any movement you want as part of your assessment. And if that's a little overwhelming and you're not sure which assessment to choose, just follow my lead, do a little bit of marching in place by lifting your leg and use that as your qualitative assessment. So what you're going to do is test out whatever movement that you're gonna use for your baseline assessment get a sense for where you are in the moment, and then kind of hang on to that thought. And what we're gonna do is perform the vision exercise, and then immediately after the vision exercise, I want you to retest with the same movement, and that's gonna give you lots of different uh, information here. Basically, you're gonna know whether or not you're better, the same or worse, and that's going to give you immediate feedback on how your nervous system is perceiving the drill, which is super helpful because I don't want you to take my word for it that this is gonna solve your problem. I want you to get a global assessment on your nervous system, right? So that we can understand whether or not this is the right stimulus. What I don't want to happen is for you to just take my word for it, assume the exercise is what you need, and then use the wrong stimulus to try to get the right response. That's crazy. That's why we use an assessment process for every single thing that we do, because we want to locate the right stimulus, we want to find it, and then we want to use it to help us. So get your baseline assessment. All right, so for vertical smooth pursuits, which is our exercise today, you need a visual target. Grab a pen, they work great. You can stare at the tip of the pen, or you can pick a letter that's on the pen, and that'll be that'll be a good visual target. So all you're gonna do is stare at your visual target and you're going to track it as you move it. So it looks like this. If I take my visual target and I have a little letter that I'm looking at here on this pencil, I'm gonna place it out in front of me at roughly, you know, maybe eye level and roughly arm's length away from me. Now, all I'm going to do is follow my target up with my eyes and follow my target down with my eyes. And you can notice how it's not my head that's moving, it's just isolated eye motion up and down. It's really common for people to have a difficult time coordinating this at first, and they actually will move their head and their eyes together. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for isolated eye movement up and down. So it's called a smooth pursuit because the actual tracking of the visual target should be smooth, not dysrhythmic, not choppy, not ratchety. And uh, we actually teach people in our neuro courses how to use vision exercises like this as an assessment so that you can identify possible um, eye muscle imbalances or visual skill deficits. That's not what we're doing with this. Right now, we're just using the stimulus to help us with a different movement goal, such as hip flexion. So keep that in mind. Um, this is just about doing the drill and taking advantage of the stimulus. And the reason we're tracking the visual target up and down actually has something to do with the movement goal and flexion. So that's what I'll explain a little bit more about at the end of the video. So what you're gonna do is make sure that as you're tracking your target up and down, 
that you're staying nice and relaxed, okay? You're able to breathe normally and you're maintaining posture and not moving your head. And you're gonna move up and down, let's say, for five repetitions. Once up and once down, we'll call that one repetition. And we're just focusing on keeping our target nice and clear. And we're focusing on making sure that the smooth pursuit is nice and smooth. All right, so after you've done those five clean repetitions of vertical smooth pursuits, making sure that you maintained good posture, that you were able to breathe and you weren't building tension in your body, and then, like we said, making sure that your tracking of your target was nice and smooth, now it's time to reassess. And so what you're going to do is go back to your baseline assessment, whichever movement you decided to use, uh, just like uh, I demonstrated with a little bit of a hip flexion test. And now what you're going to do is immediately retest and, and see, can you mark any improvement in the movement? So no matter what movement you decided to use for your assessment, improvement might be expressed as um, an increase in range of motion, a decrease in discomfort or an improvement with movement efficiency. Like sometimes people feel like the movement becomes easier or faster. If any of those things happened or all of those things happened, that means vertical smooth pursuits is a high payoff drill for you in terms of helping your hip health. And so you wanna take this exercise and you wanna put it in your high payoff toolbox that you're building. We've been using vision exercises to help people with a variety of health and movement concerns for a long time. And it really never gets old when a vision exercise helps somebody because when it does, it usually helps a lot. So if you're having that mind blown moment where you did vertical smooth pursuits and now your hip pain is gone, Cool, I'm very excited to introduce you to these ideas because as I said at the beginning of the video, uh, using applied neurology like this can really be the icing on the cake for helping you solve your movement and pain issues. So let's talk a little bit about neuroanatomy. Now, there's a lot of neuroanatomy and a lot of brain areas involved in any kind of vision exercise. But I wanna just kind of shift our attention to a few things that will help you understand what might be going on here when you do vertical smooth pursuits and your hip feels a lot better. So there's a, an area of the brain stem called the midbrain. And the brain stem is divided into three different divisions. We've got the midbrain at the top, the, uh, the pons below it, so in the middle, and then finally the medulla at the bottom. Now, because of uh, different cranial nerves that originate in these different areas of the brainstem, you know, we can make decisions about how to activate those cranial nerves. And because the brainstem is largely involved in controlling muscle tone, we can activate specific cranial nerves and hopefully see an improvement in muscle tone or function. And the way that the brainstem is kind of divided in terms of its muscle tone responsibilities is that the midbrain living at the top of the brainstem is largely involved with flexor tone. So think about it as kind of the home of flexor tone. It helps to calibrate flexor tone. And that means really any flexor based movement is going to have some relationship to the top of the brainstem, which in this case is the midbrain. And just like this video is um, based around improving hip flexion, if we have a flexion-based goal, we cannot ignore the midbrain. Now, how do we get to the midbrain? Well, we used um, vertical smooth pursuits as our delivery system for doing so. The reason being is that when I perform, you know, this eye tracking up and down, it is actually activating cranial nerves three and four. We have uh, ocular muscles, okay, that actually allow our eyeballs to do all the movements that we want to do. And those muscles are inter innervated by specific cranial nerves. And so the directionality that we chose for smooth pursuits, because remember, we could choose all these different directions, right? There's so many different options. We chose vertical because it's a very strong stimulus for cranial nerves three and four. So by activating cranial nerves three and four, 
we're going to upregulate that portion of the brain stem called the midbrain. And because it's largely involved in flexor muscle tone, we may then see an immediate response, just like when you reassessed, where flexor tone is more appropriately balanced. And that might be why your hips are moving better, right? Your flexor muscles are doing their job better. And as I said, it really can be any flexor based goal. So if you happen to have shoulder flexion issues too, uh, you might check in and see if vertical smooth pursuits could help you with, uh, with that goal too, because it often does. So that's a little bit about the neuroanatomy to help you with that mind blown moment that you might be having if uh, a vision exercise helped you with your hip flexion. Okay, so you got a great result. Now the question is, how do you work this exercise into your life so that you can maximize its benefit? So there's kind of two different scenarios that I wanna talk you through. The first scenario or the first type of person um, is going to do the exercise and get a great result and they're not gonna really have to do much else except some vertical smooth pursuits with a little bit of consistency for several weeks and you might be good to go. That's a perfect scenario. That's awesome if that's what happens for you because that does happen a lot, especially if you are literally in need of this specific um, brain activation. It literally could be exactly what you've needed the whole time and therefore the drill is gonna help you and you're good to go and it won't take very long. Now that doesn't always happen. So uh, a little bit more you know, realistic kind of um, scenario is that you do the drill, it helps you, okay? And now you have to do other things and combine other exercises with it to maximize its potential. So let's say you're already working on hip health exercise. First, I wanna remind you that you have to assess those things as well to make sure that they're actually giving you the intended result that you're looking for. So assuming that you've put together this routine for yourself that is high payoff, you would now take your vertical smooth pursuits and you would work it right into your routine. I'd probably start with it and then I'd do several sets of the vertical smooth pursuits kind of in between other exercises. What you're essentially doing with this practice is you're using the vision exercise to kind of create this window where you are now moving more efficiently and with less pain. And then you're going and loading your body after that has taken place. That is a very typical uh, training scenario and it works really good for building long-term results. So you're using the vision exercise to create better overall uh, movement and less pain. And then you're going and loading your hips and you've got lots of different options that you can do for loading your hips to take advantage of that new, more efficient, pain-free movement. Um, if you don't necessarily have any ideas yet, then you can actually just search our YouTube channel for some of our hip specific uh, motor control and mobility drills, and that might be a really good option, a really good place for you to start where you do your vertical smooth pursuits to create that uh, upgrade in your performance, and now you are doing some hip mobility drills to build your motor control, your mobility, your strength, et cetera. That would be a really good place to start. So you gotta kinda try it out, see, see where you are with things, find your minimal effective dose, but the thing that remains consistent for most people is that you're going to have to train Right? You have to check in with the exercise consistently enough to get long-term results. So what does that look like? I'd say for most people, it could be checking in with the drill several times a day. Um, and if you notice that it's really helping you, like it's, it's cons uh, consistently assessing very good for your hips, you can build your frequency throughout the day to the point where maybe you're doing that drill 10 times in a day to reduce perceived threat and improve your performance. As long as you're not having any kind of um, negative type symptom from doing the vision training, you're good to go and you can keep that frequency up and that should be very, very useful for helping you get some stickier results in the long term. All right, there it is, using vertical smooth pursuits, a vision exercise, to help you with your hip health. And I hope this exercise really helped you out. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about how we use applied neurology to help people with their movement and pain issues, well, first thing to do is subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because that does help. And we've got several different options for you. If you wanna go deeper into this material, uh, you can check out the Cruise Elite podcast. I 
basically go very in depth into a lot of uh, concepts revolving around applied neurology. And when you're ready, we have two online courses that are a deep dive into using applied neurology to help people with their movement and pain issues. So that's it for today. Thank you all for the support here on the channel so far, and I'll see you in the next video.